Hi everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews. In today's video we're going to be talking about the tools that I use all the time in bra making, things that make the process just a little bit easier. So the first tool I'm going to talk about, and you see quite frequently me in my videos, is medical tracing paper. So this stuff is incredibly cheap. I got it off of Amazon. I think I got a 12 roll pack of this for maybe $30 or something like that. And I've been using it for years. Um, it's really great for tracing because it's pretty see-through. I can definitely see patterns through this very frequently without having to use any like light box or anything like that. And it's so inexpensive that like I can literally just make a mistake, throw it away and not worry about, you know, using something expensive like Swedish tracing paper. So I would highly recommend getting some medical exam tracing paper. The next thing you see me use all the time in my videos are rulers. So some of my favorite rulers are the Dritz Style Design Ruler. So this one I've broken several times. It's definitely been taped back together, uh, but it, it still works the way it's intended to work. So I still use it. So the Style Design, what's it say? Styling Design Ruler by Dritz is one of my go-to favorite ones. But for bra making in particular, I have been really enjoying this Clover Mini Ruler set. So this comes with all three rulers. And the first ruler it comes with is this really tiny, it's like six inch by half of an inch ruler. I use this a lot in bra making. The next one is like a hip curve ruler. You can see it does have a slight curve to it. And one of the reasons why I really like these rulers is that they have uh, markings at every quarter of an inch as well as a, a five-eighths of an inch. So it makes it really easy to put seam allowances on curved like cut pieces and things like that because I already have that quarter of an inch on there. So I have one that's sort of like a hip curve and one that's like a little bit more of like an arm curve ruler. This one's the one I probably use the most in bra making but again it also has those quarter inch marks along the curve on it which make it really really nice for adding in seam allowances. So the next thing I couldn't possibly do bra making without is a rotary cutter. So I particularly like the smaller diameter rotary cutters. I think this one is a 28 millimeter diameter. I think they're very good for bra making and getting into those sort of like tight curves and little spaces that the more traditional like 45 millimeter won't be as good at. So this is a 28 millimeter and I do have one from True Cut because it is ergonomically designed. Uh, I was having some issues with hand pain so I wanted something where the, the cutting blade was directly below my hands to sort of like eliminate some of that fatigue. But I definitely would invest in a smaller diameter, smaller diameter rotary cutter if you're getting into bra making because I find this is a lot easier to cut out your bra pieces than using scissors. The next item that I have, I don't use too frequently now, but I used it a lot when I first started bra making, and that's double-sided wash-away tape. So this is double-sided wash-away tape. It has paper on both sides. And what I tended to use this for was for hooks and eyes. So I would put it into my little envelope where the hook and eye attaches to the bra, and it helps to keep everything just sitting in place while I bring it over to the machine, and I'm less likely to get like shifting or movement like that, and was able to get a little bit cleaner of a, of a a sewing line. I don't use it very much anymore just because I've been sewing bras for about three years now so I, I'm pretty good at the hook and eye portion of the bra but certainly when I was first starting out this was a very useful tool to have. Next up I have one that I think most sewers have and that is wonder clips. So I do have a bunch of different little wonder clips here. I don't use them a lot in bra making but I find them really really useful for getting stuff like elastics or channeling out of the way. If you've seen some of my recent bra tutorial video videos you'll see that like I use these wonder clips to clip like excess channeling out of the way so that I don't have to cut it until the very end. I also use it frequently when I'm testing how long I want the strap to be because I can wonder clip it into place, try it on, and, and then see if I need to like lengthen it or shorten it or anything like that. So I do find these quite useful in bra making. Next tool, which is invaluable, is always thread. So um, most of the time I use Mara 120 thread from Guterman, but if I'm working with a fabric that is particularly tricky, something like duoplex or micro duoplex, I like to go for a finer thread. So I use the superior so fine thread. I find this stuff is a lot smoother and I have less problems with skip stitches when I'm using a so fine thread. Now I don't, this is kind of expensive. I wanna say they're like $5 a spool. So I don't use this all the time, just if I'm working with fabrics that are a little bit trickier to handle. 
So the next item I have is a seam ripper. So I'm sure we have these all in our stash. And I just wanted everyone to know that even though I've been sewing bras for a little bit of time, I've sewn probably 100 bras at this point, there are still times when I make a stupid mistake and I have to unpick things. I cannot tell you how many times I put the lining on the wrong way around, like the lining's on the outside, or I forgot to put the power bar into the cup when I'm setting it into the frame. So I mean, like I still need to use a seam ripper all the time. I can't imagine not ever having to use a seam ripper, so I would go for a nicer one. This one I purchased off of Amazon. It is a brass base. Um, it's a little bit, I mean, it looks really pretty. <laughs> but other than that, I've been using it for years and years and it stays sharp, so I really like this seam ripper. And then the last tool I wanted to talk to you today is the walking foot. So I use the walking foot almost 100% of the time when I'm sewing bras, and I definitely wouldn't sew a bra without them. I find the walking foot is really helpful when you're working with slinky, slippery fabrics like bra, bra type fabrics as well as working with very fine things like lace. It helps to make sure that everything is moving smoothly both above and below on the feed dogs at the same speed. Now obviously if your machine has something like IDT or a, a dual feed or something like that you wouldn't necessarily need a walking foot but for my machine which doesn't have a lot of fancy bells and whistles this is the best thing for me to be able to get seams so that everything is lining up appropriately. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.